Oh, hi, uh, today we will continue with uh, three phase uh, voltage source inverters in the last video when we talk about the six step uh, PWM and today uh, we will talk about the sinusoidal uh, PWM. Okay, so just so as a reminder, uh, we have uh, here the three phase inverter. So we have the DC link here. Again, it, it, it doesn't have to be divided into two voltages using capacitors like that it is just shown for analysis purposes but what we have is like one two three leg of inverter and your motor or whatever uh, three phase load or source is uh, connected to those terms so actually we did the sinusoidal pwm in uh, single phase inverters so remember there was the unipolar or bipolar uh, PWM techniques. So the idea is uh, really same. So see here we also apply a triangular, you know, carrier wave that the switching frequency is generated, and you compare it uh, with your uh, sinusoidal reference voltage. Then you know, depending on that was for the uh, single phase, depending on the that comparison result, you either turn on the up or down again for unipolar and bipolar uh, those were uh, there were uh, slight differences but i'm not uh, getting into that uh, details in this video so here uh, this is completely the same so what we have is we have three you know reference uh, sinusoids for different waveforms again normally uh, you have you want to generate a balance you know three phase uh, outputs but again there can be some cases uh, which you can generate like different magnitudes or different phases that's technically possible although it may create some unbalanced currents uh, from your inverter anyway so you have your triangular waveform and then you compare it with your uh, reference uh, control signal then depending on that you know crossing points you either turn on the top transistor or you either turn on the bottom transistor again uh, for unipolar and bipolar remember you can also create the negatives of those reference voltages and compare it separately with the top and bottom ones so if you have any trouble on those ones please watch the uh, single phase inverters video anyway so for again uh, PWM either VD, VD or zero voltage is generated at the neutral point and you can have a VAN like that and you can have like VBN uh, like that so then if you want to uh, get the line to line voltages you can uh, subtract the VBN from VAN and the waveform that you are going to have will be the line to line voltages and it will be something like that okay and again it is still possible to have like plus and negatives with the same pwm so here it is like a, a three level voltage output anyway so what you see is as the voltage gets larger the due to cycle of our pwm gets larger and larger then it gets smaller and smaller here then you start applying negative voltages and again uh, the you know peaks of that voltage is limited by your dc link voltage we will discuss that in a minute and you can increase the switching frequency you know to get a higher or a sinusoidal with higher frequency harmonic so it will be easier to filter out but the thing that you need to be careful is when you increase the uh, switching frequency the switching losses will also increase and also uh, we discussed in the i think in the first semester uh, so there can be like uh, non-zero turn on and turn off times in a practical switch so you cannot just you know open the one switch and close the other switch so you need to introduce some kind of uh, that time uh, between those uh, PWM signals and again I'm not getting into the details in this video but if you have that kind of uh, that times so it may be difficult to generate like 
PWMs with really small uh, duty cycles, then you may need to skip a couple of uh, PWM uh, signals here. Yeah. I mean, you don't uh, skip it, but your uh, dead time actually eliminates uh, those uh, small PWM signals completely, which may result in uh, higher uh, THD. Anyway, so if you look at the harmonics in the line voltage, again, it is uh, similar to what we have seen so far. So if you are working in the linear range, okay, and this is, I think, for the bipolar case. Uh, so it just uh, starts so you don't have any, you know, harmonics in between if you are working in the linear range and your harmonics starts at your MF, MF is again the frequency modulation ratio. You have the sidebands, then 2 MF, then 3 MF, so on. So for example, for this case, let's say MF is 15, and if your fundamental frequency is 50, then your harmonics will be uh, seven, 700 and 800 uh, Hertz harmonics. Okay, so again, uh, if, you know, MF, get rid of, Self. Uh, if MF is small, again, maybe you are uh, limited by the transistor uh, turn on, turn off times or switching losses. So if you have to choose MF uh, kind of small, so it is better to use uh, synchronous uh, PWM. So that means the MF will be an integer. So, and again, if you need to choose an integer, it is usually better to choose an odd integer in this case, uh, to eliminate uh, the third order harmonics. Okay, so again, it can be a multiple of uh, third, so it should be a multiple of three to eliminate uh, harmonics. Okay, so let's have a look at uh, some components here. Again, you know, you don't have to memorize those things, but just to have a comparison, this is for line to line voltages. This is our amplitude modulation uh, ratio, so it works in the linear range. So this is our fundamental uh, component that it increases uh, with the amplitude modulation. And again, if you look at, you know, if you look at the first harmonics, again, it is you know, kind of uh, small, you know, not that small, but again, that one is maybe larger. That one is uh, comparable, but the good thing is, as we have like normally inverters are connected to RL loads or motors, electrical machines are uh, RL machines. You can trust on the uh, filtering capability of those uh, RL loads because you know, as the frequency gets higher, uh, your impedance will be higher. You will still see the voltage harmonics, but that will not be converted into current harmonics or if you would like to protect uh, your load from that kind of harmonics including the voltage harmonics and what you can do is uh, at, at the output of your uh, inverter maybe you can install a, a lc filter or maybe more even more complex filters and those uh, filters can be tuned to filter out uh, these components so your load will be will see a much uh, lower uh, THD. Okay, so another important thing is the amount of voltage level that you can send to the load. And again, if you are working in the linear region for a phase to a neutral line, okay, so you can say this is your uh, DC link voltage, so half of it at the top switch and this is my uh, modulation uh, ratio okay amplitude modulation ratio so if it is to one for phase voltage i can apply half of my uh, dc link voltage as peak of the sinusoids okay so what you can uh, do for line to line rms voltage you know which is most of the time the most uh, useful value so i have that value and I multiplied by square root 3 to have line to line peak then divide by uh, square root 2 to have line to line RMS voltage and again if you calculate it it is around 0 0.612 VD 
this is the maximum voltage that you can give uh, with sinusoidal PVM in linear region. So again, if you think about it, um, let's say you have 540 volts of uh, DC link voltage. Okay, if you multiply with that, then you will have 330 volts uh, line to line RMS. Okay, again, you know, that's maybe uh, less than the usual 400 volts. Then we will talk uh, about the techniques to mitigate that problem. Okay, so then you have another uh, tool like we did for the uh, single phase inverters. So you can also get into the over modulation range to increase the voltage levels. But in this case, you start introducing some uh, harmonics in your load. So the boundary that you can get in the over modulation is just give a square wave just as the single phase. So you can just generate uh, three square waves, uh, 120 degrees separated from each other. And for that case, your uh, magnitude. So now we have not the VD, but four over pi is the peak. And again, multiplied by square root three and divided by square two to find the line to line RMS. And in this case, you can go up to 0.78. Okay, again, if you multiply it with 540 volts, you will find 421 volts. Okay, so from 330 to 421 volts, you have some over modulation range. But again, you know, that has other consequences. So for other harmonics, if you just uh, get into the square wave operation, then you are not seeing like the harmonics in the uh, harmonics modulation MF, but you see like third, fifth, seventh, whatever those harmonics as well. And you have, you know, that configuration. And again, depending on your uh, load, maybe you can uh, get rid of the third order harmonics. So you will have harmonics in that configuration. Okay. So it is uh, similar to a single phase in this in this three phase configuration as well. So for the linear range, so you can go zero point or sixty percent of your uh, DC link voltage, and if you just apply the over modulation range, then there's not a linear relation, so it just kind of saturates. Then the maximum you can reach is seventy eight percent of your DC link voltage is applied to uh, line to line RMS voltage. Okay, so that's all uh, for now. Then we will continue with other uh, PWM techniques. Thank you.